Welcome back. Welcome back. It's Ed Martin here. It's the 29th Phyllis Schlafly's Collegian Summit. And I tell you that partly so you know we've been doing this a while. And Congressman Matt Gates just finished. He shook my hand. He said, you guys nailed it. You know what you're doing. Here's the thing. For the college students that are watching, and if you're watching this now a week later on YouTube or wherever you are, uh, we have a lot of resources. We want to be uh, for you. We want to help you understand what the issues are. We want to also build, as we talked about, um, if you're going to be some of the vigilant, active, and brave, you also want to have around you solidarity. Other students have been going through the same things, have gone through diff different uh, uh, kind of uh, battles. Uh, and so please go to phyllisschlafly.com. If you like what you're seeing here, do me a favor and like it and share it. Uh, subscribe to our YouTube page and spread the word. So our next guest is Cynthia Hughes. Cynthia Hughes has the distinction of being the founder of the Patriot Freedom Project, not because she thought it would be fun to have a freedom project or she wanted to be an activist, but because one of her family uh, was uh, swept up in the January 6 prosecutions. And she decided not just to be worried about her nephew, I think we call him, uh, but her family member, but also all the other families who have had uh, all kinds of troubles. Uh, the people that were arrested were not uh, the wealthy and the privileged. They were arrested in part because they were targeted, in my opinion, and they have less resources and they've had family members who are suffering. Uh, I know personally, I've been involved with three of the cases myself. But so, Cynthia, welcome. Uh, and first of all, how do you, how did you react to January 6th? How did it sort of the days after, the weeks after for you and your family? And then how did it become this cause for you? Well, first of all, thank you for having me. Yep. It's always a pleasure to be with you. Yep. Um, confusion, anger. Uh, I could not connect with my loved one. Yep. I didn't know where he was for a few weeks. He was at um, six different jails before he ended up, well, five before he ended up in DC where he got COVID. Um, solitary confinement, one hour a day out of his cell. Um, I'd get a phone call sometimes for a quick three minutes. He'd have 50 minutes to take a shower, call his lawyer, and call me. Um, that's what it was like in DC for all of these men. Um, and I was very frustrated six months later that this was still going on. And so I decided to act. I thought there needed to be a support group for the families, you, you know, a place to go where you could connect, a place to go where you knew uh, another person knew what you felt like and what you were dealing with. And so I started a support group. And before I knew it, I was talking to the most amazing woman on the planet, Julie Kelly from American Greatness. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. Um, and then next thing I knew, I was uh, getting a phone call from Debbie and Dinesh D'Souza. Yeah, of course. Who were applauding my efforts, and uh, they made a $100,000 donation. Yeah. And I turned uh, my family support group into a nonprofit, and Patriot Freedom Project was born. PatriotFreedomProject.com, PatriotFreedomProject.com. And for our college students that are sitting there, uh, just to the, 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 almost the uh, facts uh, after the January 6th events, there were swept up all these different people, men, and put in prison. And then echoing out from that, the support group you mentioned, you've spent hundreds of thousands of dollars that people donated to help families. They got kids with learning uh, issues. They've got uh, rent. They lost jobs. Their husband was the breadwinner. Um, how many people are affected? If you, not, not just the prisoners, but how many people would you guess? I know you don't know the exact number. That, uh, and devastated in a, in, a, in a real sense. Well, it, it would be in the thousands. I mean, we have 860 people, give or take, um, who have been arrested, charged, and indicted in this. Uh -huh. um, you have almost 100 people that are still behind bars. Most of them, uh, the majority of them are in pretrial detention. There's a handful that have already gone uh, to trial right. and have been, they were all convicted. Every single jury trial resulted in a conviction and they're now awaiting sentencing. And some of them are not gonna get sentenced for months. Like my nephew, uh -huh. we went to trial two weeks ago. He was convicted for uh, wearing a suit and tie and picking up a Trump flag on the floor inside the Capitol and waving it around. So um, now he is facing a few years in prison. He was found guilty on um, uh, obstruction, uh, a very important charge. And we had a good lawyer, but we needed another good lawyer. Yeah. He needed help. Um, 
And but before we get down to that specific, these families that are facing it, as you mentioned, it's pretrial t detention that's gone on for months and, and a year, and their family's upside down. The uncertainty yeah. is almost worse. When you watch the January 6th Select Committee, if you can watch it, I bet I bet it's almost impossible to watch, it's hard. hard to watch. I, I can't really stomach do, some of those people. Do you, but do you look at it and say, the reality is so far from what's being portrayed. You know, what's portrayed is like a, a, a like a, out of a movie, like some sort of, you know, I don't know, Tom Cruise movie of an insurrection. And you know the inside, it's a bunch of people that came to a rally, a few that did some dumb things, no yeah. denying, yeah. but it's portrayed one way and half the country seems to believe it. Well, it's more like a horror film. Let's, let's, yeah. let's not, uh, you know, do that Sugar to Tom Cruise. Yeah. But um, it's more like a horror film. You know, you have all of these people sitting in pretrial detention, people that are, you know, arrested. They could be on home confinement. They have very strict, you know, rules they have to follow. People have lost jobs. So it falls to the wives or the mother, the father, whatever, mostly wives. And, you know, now most of these women are working two jobs. Some weren't working. Maybe they were pregnant when their husband went to jail. Maybe they had just given birth. Now they're working some two jobs three jobs we have you know young teenage boys that are working out to help their, their their mother maybe they're paying the electric bill so there's devastation across the board for so many families these families are collateral damage in this you don't keep people in pretrial detention for 17 months especially with no criminal history everybody no matter what crime they are accused of deserves due process but this group of people has been denied due process because they support Donald Trump. And that is the main reason. And the hearings that are being televised right now for the next few weeks is simply to try to create uh, shock and awe and anger the American people. I think it will backfire on the select committee um, because all you hear is Donald Trump, Donald Trump, Donald Trump. There is a, I say to the American people, there's a total other side to this. There are two sides to this and this select committee only wants you to know their side. There is a lot behind the scenes, so much fallout, so much collateral damage, so much pain and heartache for a lot of women and children. Right. And children, Ed. Right, right. Um, so uh, Nick Smith is one of, there's a, one of the things that happened was most of these prisoners did not have any uh, representation. And so one of the things you've done, raise a bunch of money and help pay a lot of pro bono lawyers too that have done it for nothing. But you get good lawyers, you get what you pay for. And so you've had to have, and so a lot of these guys, Nick Smith is one of those lawyers that has that has been active in, in paying attention to this. When you look at what, just broadly, what these college students that are being a part of this, what these men have been charged with mm -hmm. and how they've used the legal system against political uh, actors. You know, again, you break a window, you get charged with breaking a window. Mm -hmm. But you break a window, you get charged with obstruction of Congress or whatever. Right. It's, it's a, a, a sedition. categorically sedition. Right. Um, What's your legal an analysis of what's going on? Yeah, so I think Cynthia, I just want to say first of all, has done a really good job describing the human and emotional conflict that these prosecutions have taken, the toll. Right. But I think from a legal perspective, there's three fundamental unfairnesses in how these prosecutions are unfolding. And the first one is that the government doesn't have proper charges to use for this scenario, because I think everyone can agree from all sides of the perspective political spectrum that that this has never happened something like this has never happened before so what the government is trying to do is use crimes that don't fit these scenarios in order to charge people with felonies who wouldn't be charged with misdemeanors if this were any other kind of political context right. and the main charge they're using is obstruction of justice and you don't really need to be a lawyer to know that obstruction of justice is interfering with evidence in an investigation. You're stopping information from reaching a proceeding where people are making judgments about whether someone should be found guilty or not. Right, right. That uh, just well, didn't there's happen. A, if, there's a criminal, if there's a criminal investigation of you, I find the documents and I go burn them. Right. I've obstructed justice Or you're I suborning knew. perjury. Right. You're, you're, oh, right, you're okay. bribing jurors. You're, you're preventing a process from making a judgment. That's what obstruction of justice is. They've thrown that out the window for January 6th. They said you don't need an investigation. Everybody agrees the joint session of Congress wasn't investigating something. The classic examples of obstruction Congress are Iran-Contra, 
where subpoenas are issued, there are warrants, you're bringing, you're calling witnesses before a committee in Congress and you're asking them questions. If you interfere with that, that's obstruction of justice. Nobody claims there was any investigation on January 6th. Nobody claims there's any evidence. So what you have is a horrific scenario where the government has charged over 300 people with a felony offense with a 20 year maximum sentence, which has no basis or precedent in law before January 6th. That's kind of the first unfairness. Yep. Okay. This cr charges that are not being properly applied across the board. If you ask any white collar lawyer in Washington, DC, they would tell you privately because they don't support these events. This charge has no basis. Now and wait, yet, let me pause it because yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm a collegian at heart. Um, I want to go, I want to simplify this again. You yeah. said there are three yeah. Three problems with this. The first one the, we the just first, covered is that this isn't obstruction of justice. So that's number one. And, and other crimes that other are, crimes, that are right. being misused. The okay. second is that is that protests outside of the Capitol had never been prosecuted in this manner before. Not with the same charges, but with felonies, with crimes that were different from just trespass and being where you shouldn't be. So right. there's a select, it's called selective prosecution, meaning we're taking one group of defendants and we're treating like differently than like. Right. And that's and that's a political sort right. of decision. That's the second kind of unfairness. Right. And the third is the political connection between what's going on on Capitol Hill with the politics and the committee and prosecutions. What we see are prosecutors who are actually trying to manipulate and, and, and orchestrate the proceedings on Capitol Hill by filing charges that are timed to coincide with he prime time hearings on the Capitol. And that's just something that we don't really do in this country. We don't mix politics and criminal justice in that way. That's some something that you kind of classically see in places like Soviet, the Soviet Union with show trials and things like that. But if you're a college student and you're looking up at this, you, you, and you're college students, so you're, 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 your history is relatively short, you know, five years, let's say, it looks like the system is rigged. So why isn't this fair rigging? I mean, my point yeah. is, if you're a college student, you're saying, I watched Hillary do whatever, I watched this group do whatever. I, there's, one, there's one standard for one group, there's one standard for another group. That looks more and more common. I mean, it's a problem. We agree it's a problem. But um, how do you break that out? I mean, I, I, as you were saying that, I thought, I walk around these neighborhoods in DC. You're not going to get a jury that buys that this is unfair. I think you, if you're watching this unfold and you're troubled by it, you should be. And that what you should do is complain about it and speak and vo vo you know, voice yourself about it and, t and take some action and complain and protest because what's happening is incredibly unfair. And um, it's something that we don't really see in this. Yeah. PatriotFreedomProject.com is a website. If you find out, you can find out more about it. You can support uh, what Cynthia is doing and what lawyers like Nick are doing. I'm, I'm a part of it too uh, because it's, it's just unfair and the system needs to be challenged on sort of every front. You can't just wait and have, say, a new president solve it. It's got to be on every front. Cynthia, last sort of line uh, for, uh, of thought. Um, the fam, the impact on the families, you know, like you mentioned the word collateral damage. It, it, it's, to hear the stories, it's heartbreaking. Mm -hmm. And people need to know that it's not just Matt Gates and Liz Cheney fighting it out. It's, as you mentioned, it, people are getting divorced over this. They're getting, losing their homes over it. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's, a, it's a terribly un-American thing. Yeah, I, I got a call on just this past Sunday from a young wife, she has three daughters. Um, her husband just took a plea deal. Uh -huh. He's facing eight years. Wow. We've already had to relocate her through the generous donations of the American people with Patriot Freedom Project. Um, and we, we, we just got another phone call. She lost her babysitter. So she's having trouble finding you know, daycare for, right. um, so she can work. She's got to work to support her family now. Right. Um, she got a call on Sunday while she was at work from her neighbor. The babysitter left the children alone, and they were wandering around, three years old, two years old, in the yard by themselves. Hmm. You know, th these are the things that we're facing. And I, I watched an interview with Darren Beatty, um, and he, he says that we're, what we're dealing with is nothing short of a humanitarian crisis. And he's right. And the problem here is, is that these people are already guilty. They're guilty according to the prosecution, and they're guilty, you know, according to the Democratic Party and maybe even some Republicans. Um, you're not supposed to, you know, be, uh, you know, uh, guilty to prove your innocence. It's, it's the other way around. 
um, and they're being tried in, in the media. And that is a big problem. Here in D.C., nobody's going to get a fair trial. Nobody is going to get a fair trial. When my nephew went to trial two weeks ago, it was an absolute circus. I never saw anything like it in my life. I knew by the vetting of like the sixth juror, we were, we were going to be done. That he was not going to get a fair trial. They made it very political. Do you know the prosecution asked him, do you like President Joe Biden? That was the questions that he was being asked. Wow. Not, he wasn't yeah. there for the trial, uh, in, on trial for the charges. He was there because of politics. Yeah. The American people need to know what the fallout is from this. It's not just these guys in jail. It's their families. It's their children. It's it's bad lawyers. It's, it, it's well, and it's, it's a, and it's a, and it's a degradation of the system. If you're a young person and you look up and say, "Oh, this is the way it is," it's not the way it is. Yeah. It's not the way it's been, no. and it, it needs to not be that way. And if you're a 20 year old and you're looking out in the next 10 or 15 years, the echoes of what they're doing uh, to these. Uh, families and others will be echoing out through the ages, uh, through generations, really. Um, so, uh, PatriotFreedomProject.com. Go there and check it out. Uh, Cynthia Hughes, thank you for coming in. Nick Smith, a surprise. Thank you for joining us. And uh, we'll put it all uh, up, all this up on social media also. And this is an important uh, moment. Um, I think that I think the January 6th Select Committee hearings are falling apart this week. It looks like they know they're not getting the ratings they want, but. That's not going to stop them. They're not. They're, they 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 put in in in, in um, motion some really uh, some terrible uh, machinations of, of not justice. So uh, we're going to take a break. We come back. Congressman uh, Burgess Owens will be joining us uh, from Utah uh, in a moment. Uh, it's the 29th Phyllis Schlafly Collegiate Summit. So much to learn. So much to do. Uh, be vig be vigilant. Uh, be brave. And be active. We'll be right back. <laughs> 